I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. So go the words of Muslim apologist Muhammad Hijab in his recent debate with David Wood. One of the interesting aspects of the debate is when Muhammad Hijab proceeded to chide David for making arguments against Islam that are allegedly based on an inaccurate understanding of Arabic words and phrases, even though David has had no formal education in Arabic. In one of his many intemperate outbursts, Hijab said the following. Well, don't tell me about Arabic language. You ask me about Arabic language in this, in this forum. You ask me, you don't tell me, you ask. In addition to this, Muhammad Hijab claims that David's comments or arguments based on the Old Testament text are inaccurate vis-a-vis -vis the support they give for the doctrine of the Trinity because, once again, David has had no formal education in Hebrew. Not only do you not know Arabic, but you don't know Hebrew, and you're making a big mistake by trying to interpret the, the biblical text in this way. And yet, in spite of castigating David for making comments about Arabic, Muhammad Hijab proceeds to wax eloquent on the Hebrew text, even though he's had no formal education in Hebrew. As the following clips will show, not only has he had no formal education in Hebrew, he doesn't know the first thing about Hebrew. The word Elijah in the, in the Hebrew language means God is with us. No, Elijah does not mean God is with us. Elijah, or Eliyahu in Hebrew, means my God is Yah, or Yahweh. Yah is a contracted form of the divine name. There's two words for spirits in the Hebrew language, the Ruach, which is the same as the Arabic, and the Ruach. No, there are not two different words for spirit in Hebrew, Ruach and Ruach. There's one word in Hebrew, Ruach, and it can mean either spirit or wind, depending on the context. And speaking of wind, it seems like Muhammad Hijab is pulling things out of midair. Because when we look at the Old Testament, we find the Shema, chapter 6, verse 4, Shema Israel, Adonai Elohino, Adonai Echad, Hero Israel, my Lord, our Lord is one Lord. No, the text does not say Shema Yisrael Adonai, but Shema Yisrael Yahweh. That's how it's written in the biblical text. Here, Muhammad Hijab is not showing evidence that he can read the biblical text. He's simply parroting the way it's stated by contemporary Jews, who refuse to state the divine name. But in addition, the Shema does not mean, Hear, O Israel, my Lord, your Lord is one. The Shema is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Once again, Muhammad Hijab does not know Hebrew, and yet he's pretending to speak with some kind of authority or insight or knowledge regarding the Hebrew text, something that he forbids to David, since David has had no formal education in Arabic. Now someone might argue, but the word Elohim, and this is the weakness of the argument, it's a weak linguistic argument, the word Elohim is a majestic plural, they would argue. Look. There are 9,000 pronouns in the Bible which relate to God's name. Let's take, for example, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Bereshit, Bereshit, Bara, Elohim. The word Bara means He created. Whenever you find a pronoun in the Old Testament referring to Elohim, you will always find it in third person male singular one more time third person male singular you don't find a plural version of that you don't find a pronoun which is pluralized there are at least two problems here in the first place while the word bara indeed means he created it's not a pronoun in hebrew it's a verb it's an affix third person masculine singular form of the verb he created more significantly, if that's not significant enough and not clearly an indication that Muhammad Hijab doesn't know Hebrew, is Muhammad Hijab's unargued assertion or ignorant claim that whenever you have the plural noun for God used in the Old Testament, Elohim, it's always used in conjunction with a singular term. He says pronoun, but he really should be saying verb. But the problem is that's not correct. There are numerous instances where the Old Testament uses Elohim in conjunction with plural verbs. For example, in Genesis 20:13, where it says, And it came about when God caused me to wander from my father's house, the verb, caused to wander, is a third common plural, 
used in reference to Elohim and literally means they caused to wander. All of this is just one of many different lines of evidence proving that Muhammad Hijab's rhetoric in the debate was not commensurate with the substance of his argumentation and that his indignation was only equaled by his hypocrisy and errors. Oh, and to Muhammad Hijab, I would return the favor and say you're welcome for the free Hebrew lesson, but since you've now been exposed for pretending to know Hebrew, it seems more appropriate to say you're paying for it.